The next rule I'd like to look at with respect to the derivation rules for predicate logic is existential introduction. Existential introduction says that from a well-formed formula that involves an, a name, and let's just call this name A, we can reason to or derive in the derivation an existentially quantified well-formed formula. And that existentially quantified well-formed formula is the result of consistently replacing at least one name A with an existentially quantified variable. A basic example would be, let's say you had PA. You could, making use of existential introduction, reason to an existentially quantified formula, EX, PX. And here what we've done is taken this A, this name A, and replaced the A with a variable, X, that is now existentially quantified. Similarly, let's say we had QBB. Were we to make use of existential introduction on this particular formula, we would replace at least one of the names with a bound variable. We're going to replace each B with an X, and that X is going to be existentially quantified. So the idea here is we're reasoning from a particular formula to an existentially quantified expression, and we're replacing each of the names with an existentially quantified variable. Existential introduction corresponds to how we reason with various propositions. That is, if I say tech is a cat, or if I name an individual and ascribe that individual a property, I can reason to the statement that something is a cat. So if tech is, the cat, is a cat, then by existential introduction, something is a cat. More formally, we might write CT. And so what we're saying here is tech, right here, tech, has the property of being a cat. And if that's the case, if tech is a cat, then something or someone is a cat. So in short, existential introduction allows you to derive or reason to or write in the proof an existentially quantified well-formed formula. We reason from a well-formed formula with a name in it to an existentially quantified expression. Let's look at two examples. In our first example here, we start with two formulas, PA and RB. Line three is the result of applying existential introduction to line one. We reason from PA to EXPX. And you'll notice what we've done here is taken the name A and replaced it with a variable and added an existential quantifier that quantifies for that specific variable. We reason from, let's say, Alfred is a person to someone is a person. At line two, we have RBB, and line four is the result of applying existential introduction to line two. Here we've replaced each one of the Bs with existentially quantified variables. You'll note in each case we reason from a formula to an existentially quantified expression, and our reasoning only relied upon one line prior in the proof. At line three, we only required line one to reason to this existentially quantified expression, and at line four, we only required reasoning from line two to this existentially quantified expression. There are a couple extra things to note about existential introduction. The first is that the replacement of variables must be uniform but you only need to replace one name. That is, if you're planning on replacing more than one name with an existentially quantified variable, you need to make sure it's the same name in each case. Let's look at an example. So here's a number of instances of existential introduction. Some are acceptable, some are not acceptable. In the case of line three, we applied existential introduction to line one. And what we've done here is replace the name B with an existentially quantified variable x. And so this is an acceptable use of existential introduction. We're taking the single name b and replacing it with the existentially quantified x. Line four is also an acceptable use of existential introduction. We were, but in line four, we're replacing the name a with the existentially quantified variable x and we're leaving B alone. Line five is not an acceptable use of existential introduction. Here, we might say that line one says that Alfred loves Bob, and we're reasoning to a formula that says someone loves themselves. Well, in virtue of the fact that one individual loves another distinct individual, it doesn't follow from this particular proposition that an individual loves themselves. But what we've done here is we've taken two names, 
two distinct or different names and replaced it with the same variable. And this is not acceptable according to existential introduction. When we replace more than one name with a variable, then we may need to make sure it's the same name and not a different name when we do the replacement. When we look at line six, what we have here is the same name, B and B. And so it's acceptable to make use of existential introduction on this and replace each one of the Bs, if we're going to replace more than one, with an, the same variable. But you need not replace all of the variables when you make use of existential introduction. Take a look at line two. We have two Bs right here, but at line seven, we're reasoning to there exists an X, RBX. So we've taken the rightmost B and replaced it with an existentially quantified variable, and we left the leftmost B alone. This would follow, let's say two says Bob loves himself. Well, it would follow from Bob loving himself that Bob loves someone, that someone just is himself. So this is something to keep in mind if you're planning on using existential introduction to replace more than one name with a variable.